I'm over here making What's going on, everybody? I'm here to give you guys a review for Love Hip Hop Miami Season 1, Episode 1, titled Welcome to Miami. Question of the day <clears throat> How do you rate this episode? I have this episode of A plus plus, a check plus plus, whatever we gonna call it. This episode was amazing. I laughed. I looked at the screen. I was mad. I almost threw my damn wine glass. Like it was a lot of shit. <laughs> but we gonna get into it. All right, we gonna get into it. But y'all rate it down below in the comment section. So <clears throat> it starts off with Amara La Negra. She is fucking stunning. <clears throat> like. She looks like a thick ass black Barbie. Like she is gorgeous. And after looking at her at a close up, like she remind, like she looks like she could be akin to Kenya Moore. I'm, j I'm just saying, but she is fucking stunning. Anyway, she is Dominican Latina. Okay. <clears throat> uh, her mother is a uh, mama Ma uh, Manny. She uh, came to uh, the U.S. Uh, like 20 years ago. Um, gave up everything for this fresh start. <clears throat> she wants to cross over to the American market. She wants to pop, you know, so, you know, her mother doesn't have to warn me for anything. She has <clears throat> two uh, Latinas, uh, Veronica Vega and Simply Jess, to help her, which I can already tell I'm probably not feeling like either one of the asses by the end of this season, but we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, she says that she, and then, um, she ends up, she goes on a business date with, uh, a producer named Young Hollywood, and she brings her mother along, and he feels kind of way, and I can understand him feeling a way, He's like, if that's not your manager or anything like that, why are you bringing your mother <clears throat> to something that is dealing with business? Now, her whole thing is, she's going to see something that I want, which, you know, more often than not, you know, there's somebody in our circle that can see shit we don't see. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but it still was in, you know, in a pro pro. But he kind of went along with it. So we uh, get introduced to a rapper named Gunplay. He says that um <clears throat> he was staring down life sentence, but you know he's now on his second chance. Has a girl named uh, Kenyara. They were in the ATL, but they're going back to Miami. <clears throat> but her whole thing, she's apprehensive because of his past and possibly working with his past female in question is Miami Tip. I'm just going to call her ass Tip for the sake of this motherfucking uh, series, okay? I, <clears throat> I ain't got time for all these damn names and shit. If I didn't already say this review may be long because we're introducing so many different people. And also, I actually have a story to tell y'all that's going to correlate with one of these uh, characters. But, well, not characters, but one of these people. But it may be long. <clears throat> he meets with Trick Daddy and Trick you know it's mad that you have people that you know work with Miami artists they still they steal their sound their flavor their lyrics don't give credit don't pay homage I wish that happens often but you can tell that Trick Daddy is so pro Miami and he don't like people eating off those from Miami like we've seen that in the blogs and Trick is pretty much saying that he's working on a track with Trina it's go oh, I'm sorry an album it's gonna be a Trick and Trina album TMT gonna blow the shit up um <clears throat> gunplay is like he wants him on the track and he's like hey you from miami i'm gonna work with you we see shay johnson you know uh i think her name was bucky for flavor love she was also on charm school she was also on love and hip-hop atlanta with scrappy <laughs> now she on here had a long relationship has a long distance relationship with a dude happens to be pleasure p from the group pretty ricky and <clears throat> she has moved to miami for his own distance relationship to make it work. Now, Pleasure P says that he is getting pretty Ricky back together. Shay's not here for it. Moving on. <clears throat> so now we have uh, Bobby uh, Light. I'm just calling him Bobby. He's an openly gay rapper and he is trying to make it. And they, they're just showing that, you know, he's not getting any play, but by how he sounded in the studio like it sound like the boy got bars and whatnot and he's also uh trina's cousin now trina has a party she's performing you know nah 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 tree daddy comes out i guess she wanted to give the uh, audience you know some throwback trina 
And, <clears throat> you know, Trina pretty much does not support Bobby Music. But he supports her, which I think is foolish. It really is. <laughs> like, I'm related to many motherfucking people. And his thing, shit, if you don't rock with me, I don't fucking rock with you. Is that motherfucking simple. Like, <clears throat> point blank in the motherfucking period. My thing is, it's just because we related don't mean we family. <laughs> like, it ain't about me. Um... He shows up and she doesn't like the fact that he's loud and he looks colorful, which I think Miami is going to open up a hell of a lot because if, as you've seen with the uh, last couple um iterations of Love and Hip Hop, I said they have been, you know, open up more towards, you know, uh, the gay, les well, LGBTQ community and I get the feeling she doesn't like him because he is not openly gay, but openly flamboyantly gay. I think that's why she doesn't like him or she doesn't fuck with him. My opinion, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. <clears throat> but, you know, she says in 2016, he got into it with her assistant. But that seemed very one-sided because we saw very limited footage, but he did not go into much detail and you know he even says uh you, he calls her staff minions and one of her staff members the one that he got into it with is just rolling his eyes doing the absolute most he asked what's going on for the night she says well i'm going to a party but you're not going and she calmly i guess sort of kind of reason just like <clears throat> it is enough that you've been invited be happy that i'm not kicking you out and it's one of those which like she read them, but it's just like, damn, you are being disrespectful and on some real shit. If you don't want nothing to do with him, it is so fucking easy to cut him off. It, it's real fucking simple. But there's something there. All right. <clears throat> so then we get pretty Ricky. So we got all the guys. We got Pleasure, Spectacular, Slickum. Baby Blue Woe, I'm going to call his ass BBW because I got tired of be sitting here saying a whole lot of motherfucking names and shit. So Sligum is glad that everybody is pretty much going to be pulling their weight this time around. BBW says he felt like he carried everything. And this is, and Pleasure even said that it seemed like the blame game gets played every time that they're around. And then you had... um. BBW said that he gave his blood, sweat, and tears. He was the one that was constantly in the studios. They came in, did they shit and left, but he stayed in the studio. He recorded the music, engineered the music, he mixed the music. Now, Spec, pretty much, I <clears throat> I feel like he's the tiny the group where he's like the peace man. He's just like, look, man, you did all that because you wanted to. That was then, this is now. You don't have, like I said, we don't have to do that now. We can do things the right way. For what it's worth, they just kind of, you know, kiss and make up. Now, I'm going to say this. Escape got their own fucking, sh uh, you know, little spinoff. I shit you not. Pretty rickety they own motherfuckers. Because it, it seemed like the shit is real. Even though they shouldn't have any reason to be going at each other. Because y'all are all back together. It seemed like the shit is so deep-rooted. They need their uh, Unsung, at the least. But they need their own fucking spinoff. Because I won't know what the fuck happened. I, I won't know the real team. That's just me. And so Amala Negra meets with Young Hollywood. Now, this right here is when colorism. So, so on one hand, I said that you know Mona has been you know opening up you know for the LGBTQ community to pretty much shine, you know, on a black uh, predominant um, show. Well, colorism has now walked in the motherfucking door, and. This motherfucker, is, he is not living for her look. He says he needs her to look more like Beyonce and less like Basic Great. Now, the whole entire time I am looking at my fucking screen, it's like, nigga, who the fuck is you? Like, on some real shit, like, I was getting upset for obvious fucking reasons. And I'm going to talk... Before I even finish, I'm going to share a story with y'all. No shit, this shit happened, so... Friday, let's say we were going to have day schedules um, last two weeks. I go back to work tomorrow, four days. 
we're gonna have a schedule I had to you know take care of some business and where I had I needed my hair to be like fully picked out because normally I try to keep my hair a little bit more compact again not to sit here and defend anybody and for someone to say that my hair is you know not within a certain standard so I'm in the commissary shopping for New Year's Eve with uh, my colleague because he was gonna take the food back to his house less shit I gotta carry around and as I'm going through the aisles, I went up and down every aisle to make sure that I didn't forget anything. And I can see this one individual is staring at me. Now, he's with his wife, but he is staring at me. And I'm just like, okay, so shit's finna come. But I'm trying to be, I try my best to be as optimistic as I possibly can. So, we get towards the end, I realize, fuck, I need some more tin pans. Just so I can make sure that everything is a okay. Less shit we gotta clean up by the end of the fucking night. So I go back to aisle two, and I'm coming up the, uh, I guess bottom way. He's coming up the front way, and it's one of those ways. Just like it's convenient, we end up in the same fucking aisle. So he walks up to me, and I guess by virtue of rank, because I think had I been lower on the totem pole, shit would have went hell of a lot differently. But he was like, do me a favor. Now, here's the thing. Had this been old me, because I'm literally about to go back in time, pull the old me, bring his ass into 2018. Because a lot of shit that I let slide in 15 and 6, no, no, 16, 17, that shit ain't slide. Well, 15, 16, 17, because I actually got to North Carolina midway through our 15. Ain't feeling that shit slide. But I'm like, okay. He was like, please cut your hair. Now, no, like the way that I have operated these last two years, I will let it go. But I'm like, okay, what's wrong with it? Because I want to know. Because my thing is, I think I know what you're going to say. I want to hear you fucking say it. He asked me who my head supervisor is, and I tell him who. He's like, well, tell him. Why don't you go ask him what is wrong with your hair? And if he cannot tell you, then I will tell you. You can let him know my name is. I'm just I'm trying to clean it up not to give too many but his name was last name was Santiago. Let him know this is my name. And I'm like, okay, we'll do. Because my whole thing is this. Why don't you tell don't don't have like and now I'm going to oblige you when I go back to work tomorrow. I'm gonna to find, you know, my balls and and it's on some real messy shit, but it's a proof of fucking point to oblige this motherfucker in the event. Cause where I'm at, it's so small. I know I've seen his ass several times. When I was in my other room before I moved to my permanent room, I seen him several times, but I always had my head on. So I know I'm going to see him again, especially because where we're at, it is so fucking small. Like you see these same fucking people over the fuck over. And because of how I am and how I wear my hair, is isn't is you're going to, you're going to know who the fuck I am. So I'm very noticed. But it was one of those where. I even, because I wanted him to tell me, you know, that the regs say I'm out of order because I was going to pull the shit up on my phone because the most that you can say is my shit is faddish, even though this is not faddish. And if you go back in time, you will see that white people and black people sported a box top. If you if you uh, ever play Street Fighter, the uh, fighter Guile pretty much has a fucking box top going on with his fucking hair. So my shit is not fucking faddish. The most they may say is that my shit is excessive. And now again, I have my shit picked out because I was actually doing something where I needed my hair to actually be a little bit out. Because again, I'm in Europe. I'm trying to. I don't want there to be a whole lot of attention on me. As you know, an American, well, not really American, but you know what my profession is. So having my hair a little bit more fuller kind of beats that stereotype, you feel what I'm saying? But I was so fucking furious. And even my colleague, he could not understand why I was so mad. I'm like, this happens in America. The colorism, the racism, you know, the media pumps, you know, this certain agenda where it's such a self-hatred that black men and women cannot wear their natural hair. That we are to be ashamed of our natural hair. Here's the thing. I cannot help the fact that my hair is coily. I cannot help the fact that my hair grows up and not down. But what I will say is... I'm very proud of how my hair is, how it looks. This hair right here is my motherfucking crown, and I will wear it as such. And I know that people get mad because I've dealt with this the entire nine years I've been in. I have dealt with this. 
but it doesn't fucking matter. And because he's not directly in my chain, I really don't give a fuck. But that's why I asked him because I think he wasn't mad. Like, it wasn't that my shit was out of order. I think he was upset because of the texture of my hair and how proud the fuck I am with it. His last name was Santiago. I don't know exactly what his background is, but he is Latin. He is Hispanic. And that hurt me more than anything. He's just like, man, you a bruh. Like, you, like you a bruh for the most part and you acting like this. That shit had me hot. I'm still, I still feel the ways. I didn't want to say it on, I didn't want to say anything on camera because I didn't think it was going to be, like, I didn't want to bring more attention to it, but watching this episode, I'm like, I fucking have to. So, pick and go where we left off. That was me and my little rabbit hole. He, so she asked if, so I can't be elegant with an afro. And he says, uh, I guess so. Like being mad fucking disrespectful, you know, it's taunting her, doing the black power fist, copying her hand movements and shit. Where it's just like the colorism is fucking real. And trust me when I say she looks more, like I said, she looks elegant. I'm pretty sure she can go into a business meeting, afro and all, and a little more presentable than this motherfucker with tattoos all over, all over his motherfucking face. You know what I'm saying? And she even said, just like, there are different Latinas. You know, I had, and you know, because he even asked her, well, what is this, you know, uh, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, this whole, whatever, is African Latina. Is it because you're African or because you're Afro? She was like, I don't know if you realize I am black. Like, <laughs> this shit pissed me off because like I said, I, I said, as you can see, my hair is fucking natural. And like, that shit fucking pisses me off. And within, even within the black culture, there is that whole thing of, you know, you know, uh, light skin is best. You know, the straighter your hair, the better you are, where everything is, you know, put out there. There's so much media that teaches self-hate. If you have dark skin, natural hair, I fucking hate it. I fucking I can be much more mad. I'm really trying to compose myself on this fucking camera. I'm sorry. And he says to her, he's not trying to offend her. But then he goes and calls her psychotic. And because his whole thing is he wants cookie cutter. His thing is if I, if I were to work with you, you know, would you be willing to pretty much change up your style? You know what I'm saying? Again, you can't, you know, pop looking the way that you are and that... The shit made me mad. It 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 really pissed me off. Grab my fucking gears, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's how the fuck I felt. Like that shit is mad fucking disrespectful. Like for real, for real. And she leaves. I would have fucking left too. I would have fucking left too. So now you got gunplay and uh uh Kiara, and we learned that she's from Chicago. Shot town in this bitch. And she been shot three times. So he understands where it's just like situation will change. You being shot three times, literally staring down a fucking life sentence. So experience change people. And she's concerned that he will slip back into his own way, i.e. the women, the drugs, and not selling, but taking drugs. Like she's concerned. That's why she didn't want them to go back. And you know, his whole thing is we here for the bag. And this is the best place to fucking get it. Because she loves the scenery. That's about it. And she asked him if she were with any female artists because she wants to know. And he says that he's working with a girl named Miami Tip, but he does not tell her he used to deal with her back in the day. We're probably gonna see this play out. And my thing is this if she from the shot and she been shot three times, you really think she ain't gonna sit here and roll up on somebody? Now here's the thing. I like Miami Tip. I like I like how she looks. She reminds me of singer Pink with the pink hair. I fuck but, seems like she pushing boundaries just a little bit. So, the pretty ring performance, Shay comes to support. Now, it's the end. They're taking pictures with females. And they the guy from the tell like, that's the last person. But Pleasure's like, no, nah, she with me. So, she walks in big-headed as fuck. Like, you've arrived. And you have not. You are nothing but a reality star at best. That's it. You have no fucking career absolutely none and you know um she 
BBW asks, you know, why she here? She says, I'm here supporting my man. He is the group. And then, she, so now she feels that she needs to sit here and come for him. So she's like, I see this group is back together. It wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that that long ago. So BBW asked, man, where you get this whole from? The halfway house? I fucking hollered <laughs> like i'm saying like this man got some motherfucking reads in him and he is sitting here just like are you finna come for me bad i'm finna come for you came for her makeup and every damn thing i laughed i hollered because she came in disrespectful so i mean you give disrespect you get disrespect just saying and you know she says my she says my man the one that matters that's going to jumpstart your careers that you don't have. I kind of paraphrase there. And, you know, uh, Pleasure pulls up to the side and fucking, you know, Specs just like, like, what the fuck, man? And she's going off. She was like, and he even tells us, like, you came in disrespectful. Nobody else did. She's like, well, I don't have a problem with you or you saying spec or pleasure. But she's like, I got a problem with that fat, you know, glittery motherfucker right there, this, that, and the third. And then she snaps and goes off on pleasure like so you just gonna sit you gonna stand there and let a motherfucker talk to me crazy or whatnot you ain't gonna defend me he's looking at her in disbelief just like you fucking bugging right now like you own some shit right now then she walks away said i'm giving you my ass to kiss Whew. wow so now we got bobby and miami tip or and or, or tip as i should say now Tip has a lunch, uh, I, not really day, but like a little lunch meeting or get together with Trina and her friends and assistant. She decides that she wants to bring Bob because, okay, there are some issues. Maybe this will be the time to, you know, kind of rectify it. I don't know why she thought that, but okay. So Bobby sits down and is and Trina even looked at her like, I didn't know you we was, we was bringing plus one. Like, she's not here for Bobby. Now, again... Either she doesn't like him for the lifestyle that she live that he lives, or it's something underlying that they haven't talked about. So I don't know. But Bobby tries to address Trina. Her assistant Alvin jumps in. And she like literally like cuts that shit. Like sh both of you shut the fuck up. But at this point, I feel like Trina should have addressed her assistant because Bobby didn't say shit to him. He was talking to her. So this is one of those where you can see that I think Trina has already chosen size when it comes to her uh, cousin. And Alvin pretty much says, you want to take my spot. And Bobby's like, you want to take my spot as her cousin, as her blood. But uh, you fucking can. So Tip says Trina doesn't, in her green screen, doesn't support Bobby, but she supports her music. So she don't want to fuck that up. And then she even goes on to ask the boys at the table what is the problem so alvin says he's a bum i think he's that bitch but he's a bum and he will always be you're beneath me you will always be beneath me now here's the thing y'all y'all know my favorite love of hip-hop person is moniz i loves me some moniz i do i love that crazy ass. i love her and it's one of those where Shit, hood recognized hood, real recognized real crazy, recognized crazy. So I was watching Bobby's movement after he got disrespected, and I'm like, some shit about to go down because he played with his glasses and whatnot, took a deep breath, I did a whole look off to the side, and this motherfucker grabbed his glass. He ain't throw a drink, he threw the entire fucking glass full force, hit Alvin in the face, the shit literally broke on his face he still had pieces of glass sitting on his face and like the motherfucker looks stunned but i hate to say it that's what happens when you talk shit now bobby is a real hood nigga like you can fucking see that he might be gay but he's and here look here's a lesson y'all just because a motherfucker gay don't mean ain't got it <laughs> don't be kicking your ass well okay i'm pretty sure there's enough footage on there never run around but Hey, you, it was one of those where you sent for Bobby, well, damn it, Bobby showed the fuck up. So, Bobby and Trina go outside, and his whole thing is just like, I don't understand why you let your minions come in me the way that you do. And 
you know, she kind of says to him, you cannot impose your outrageous ways on me. And I really do think that Trina just doesn't want to be seen with him. And I think it's probably the whole accessory thing that I hear a lot of my, you know, good people on uh, YouTube talk about where, you know, you'll have a gay person on your arm as an accessory. But that is it, you know. But again, it could be more that I don't know about. He says to her, I'm blow up with or without you. And that's what episode is. So it was the A fucking plus. I laughed. I hollered. I got mad. I was trying to figure out what the fuck Tricky Daddy was wearing in his confessional. Cause when I say I when I saw that shit, I I literally like paused the shit and laughed. No shit for a good two fucking minutes. I did near damn near lost my damn voice. Cause this shit was so fucking funny. But I enjoyed this and I think that Miami's gonna bring it. And I think I'm gonna like Miami only because of the simple fact that there is that gutter and that realness because they show the um parallel between the glitz and glamour of Miami and the gutter of Miami which I'm shocked they're doing it because I've been telling people forever like I highly doubt they would ever do a love of hip-hop in Chicago because there are so many gutter places where if you want to get the real Chicago you got to go to the gutter you got to go to the hoods you got to go to the project and I don't see Mona doing that because most of their ass is going to get the fuck shot I'm, I'm not even trying to front because it, it's motherfuckers beefing all the motherfucking time straight bullet boom there you go so but I can appreciate this, and this, and this one, but that shit's real. Now, maybe season, maybe halfway through season two, probably three, four, five, shit gonna get fake. But that, but here's the thing: the first season is always fucking genuine, authentic. Cause motherfuckers finna sit here and show the fuck out. They show the fuck out for this first damn episode. Amar La Negra, that's that's my girl. I rise for her, so Moniz is my girl on uh, Hollywood. You know, Amar is my girl on motherfucking um. Love hip hop Hollywood. Hope I'm not Hollywood Miami. Hopefully, you know she, you know she don't do nothing to make me fuck. Damn, it's almost time to go. Okay, I got, I gotta hurry to get this shit done. I gotta go to the post office. My fucking packages there and shit. I was so fucking mad. I've been I ordered something on the 17. Shit just not got here on fucking Friday. And by the time I got, by the time I checked my fucking phone and got saw the email, it was already time for the damn post office closed. So that's it. Um, please answer the question today in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys for the next video, which I think is the two women Atlanta. Peace.